There's been an idea in my head for some time now, and that is to show how I got from this to this. And it's a very long story, and I have a lot of photos going all the way back to eight years to show you, to show you, really, how it happened and how it was such a slow transformation from dressing modern and kind of trendy, I wouldn't say, like, completely trendy. I've always been kind of different and weird with what I like to wear. So I'm going to show you exactly my style evolution from dressing modern to dressing vintage. And in my case, it's a little bit late 30s, early 40s. That's what I like the most. That's what I've said many times before with everything I do. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that a lot. So anyways, let's get to it. So starting out, you will see that these are some photos of me from my freshman year of high school. And that was a very interesting time for me. I was just discovering fashion in the sense of, I guess, high fashion. I wouldn't say high fashion in this case, but I was reading a lot of Teen Vogue. And if you remember back to like, 2011 I want to say this is around that time I'm not a hundred percent sure yeah I think this is eight or nine years ago when I first started my first fashion blog and I don't even remember what it was called I don't think it was called what I eventually went with later which was the life and times of Aaron Smith this one was different and I made my first post wearing this outfit and I had to have been maybe not even 15 yet maybe 14 so here I am in these, and yes, a lot of inspiration from Teen Vogue, very preppy, very just, oh, there's my dog, hello, are you going to help me, yeah, are you going to help me make the video, you can come sit up here if you want, yeah, you want to, you want to come help, you can come help, okay. so now I have my assistant lady, she's going to be helping us with this video, so continuing on. You can see that I gravitated towards a vintage style when I got my hair cut. I was so obsessed with Marilyn Monroe at the time that I wanted to look like her so bad. So I bleached out my hair and then I finally begged my mom enough to let me get it cut short. And she always begged me not to cut my long hair. She thought I'd regret it, but I really did not. I was so in love with Marilyn Monroe. I wanted to just be her so I got my hair cut just well almost just like her I tried <laughs> so I think with that haircut it really made me start thinking about vintage fashion so this is kind of 60s inspired I want to say I don't think I knew what I was doing and if I recall I think that is actually a shirt that I am wearing with tights so very interesting choice and then here I guess this is a little Bonnie and Clyde inspired if you take into consideration the studs on my massive stilettos that would probably kill someone and I remember putting those studs on that collar and I was so proud because I put those studs on that collar. That was all me. I did that. It was very popular at the time to just put studs on everything. And then here we have a more... I don't know what this is. I want to say I was inspired by some 60s looks. I think that was one of my first vintage shirts that I thrifted and I didn't even know at the time that it was vintage. I just knew that it looked older and then I was going to style it kind of vintage, kind of modern and I put leather shorts with it because why not? Moving on, I don't know what happened. I kind of went backwards. I kept doing that. You're going to see that throughout these photos that I was going almost vintage and then just Nope, going back. Couldn't do it. Couldn't commit. So here we go. This is a nice, uh, I believe that's a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. I think it was my dad's and I cut it up and I feel really bad now because 
I probably donated it and he would probably wear it still. I'm sorry, Dad. So continuing to this, I want to say that this was Lana Del Rey inspired. I, okay, I'm still obsessed with Lana Del Rey. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you listen to her still. Why do you like Lana Del Rey? I'm sorry. I love Lana Del Rey. And even though I wouldn't wear this now, I, I still appreciate my appreciation for her back then. So sorry. <laughs> so here's a nice grungy look. Once we moved to Texas, to Dallas specifically, I got really caught up with really high fashion looks and what was popular. And it wasn't high fashion, I, I take that back. I would say street style. What was popular in the street style community. And I wanted to look like that so bad because it was so popular and I wanted to do whatever was that popular at the time. I was all over whatever was the hottest thing to do at that given time. Being that I was in this big city now and I wanted to fit in with all these fashion people. So that's exactly what I did. I just did whatever was catching on. And I don't even know what moon child means. If someone could explain that to me, I would really appreciate it. So. <laughs> so I think I found this jacket at a thrift store. And I kind of wish I still had it. Actually, it's probably worth something now. I think I just donated this at one point. But anyways, I was trying so hard to be Lana Del Rey still. I think if you've seen her music video for Ride, she's wearing a fringe leather jacket and I wanted to look like that so bad. So here we go. That is my version of that. Very nice. So this is... <laughs> if you followed my original post about me wanting to make this video, you would have seen this compared to how I look now. And I just would like to give this a title, maybe calling it the thrift store, thrift store thug. I think that's appropriate. Yeah, I'm trying to be funny. So here we go. I, I go from this to this. This is around the same time frame. So I, I'm sorry, I can't even explain how that happens. But I was going to a lot of fashion shows at the time. As I explained before, I had moved to Dallas with my family and I was very much into um, going to a lot of the fashion shows in Dallas. And I met a lot of people going there who really inspired me to get into the fashion scene. I didn't do anything with it, I just loved attending the fashion shows. I loved everything about it and I thought it was a very exciting environment. So. You will see a lot of me going to these shows and dressing up for them. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, more. <laughs> what? I have gloves on. Don't lick my gloves. So, here is a good fashion show photo. I am all dolled up in a very short satin dress and what looks like a fur around me. So, I was trying. I was trying to be vintage and I just don't, I don't know if I even knew the connection there yet. I knew I liked it, but I, I had no idea if that's what I was doing at the time. Cool. <laughs> stop! So this next one, stop! I'm gonna make you get down if you keep doing this. Stop. Thanks. So. Here is where my grunge meets my vintage, I would say. This is a nice, um, I don't know if this is even considered grunge. This is like where rock meets vintage and yeah. Got my rolling stones with my fur. So as you can see, now that we get further into these that I am getting a little more vintage. I'm wearing pearls a little more. but. I'm wearing leather leggings with my tweed jacket. So I was I was really trying, but I couldn't let go. That commitment just, it was not there yet at all. So here, this was my first real blog post on my blog that I was super committed to for a really long time. And this was my version of a 1940s look. and. 
This was a giraffe print dress that I got from a company that I actually was getting clothing from to blog about at the time, so this was a big deal for me. I was moving from just posting photos on Lookbook, if you know what that is. It's like a, a platform for fashion related photos. You post your look on there and it's called Lookbook. You get popular, you get likes on there, and yeah, you just kind of start getting into blogging with that. So at this time you can see the vintage influence really starting to take off, but I still had an attachment to designer pieces at this time because I wanted to look like I had money even though every, almost every, vin or not vintage, almost every designer piece that I'm wearing in these photos is a copycat that I got on eBay and I was really proud of those. I would flaunt those like they were the real deal and I was probably the only person who believed that they looked real. So that was fun for me. This photo, I would say this photo is what started everything. After this, I felt so good and I felt so myself and so within my element, I guess you could say. I was really inspired by Prada's campaign that they had from 2012. I bought the glasses in that photo you can see, which were a copycat as well. And I, I was trying really hard to look like their models, how they would curl their hair, and they look like dolls practically. I was so obsessed with that, and it was a kind of 50s inspired, so I was trying to really emulate that here. And here's the photo you can see for a comparison. I was obsessed with how they did their hair and makeup and the colors they used. I wanted to look just like these models and that's what definitely got me into curling my hair vintage style. And then I just go right back. I, I was almost there and I, I go right back again. So that's exactly what happened with this. And this is actually from another fashion show I went to that night. I, I would try to dress really, I don't even know what you would call this, I guess, just like, I'm gonna call it like Beverly Hills chic. Sure, let's go with that. Oh, I forgot to mention that this was the first time I got a spray tan, if I'm not mistaken. And I felt really good about myself because at the time I still really hated having such pale skin and I wanted to try to look as tan as possible because I thought that was what looked really attractive on me with my blonde hair and it actually just kind of made me look super fake at the end of the day. I realize that now but at the time I felt so good about myself even though I looked really fake. I didn't care that I looked fake and that's what I was into. and. You know, if you're into that, by all means, and if you feel good about yourself, that's totally you, and you do what makes you feel good, but at the time, I know that I was not feeling like myself while dressing this way. I felt good, but I don't think I felt like myself yet. I was still trying to find myself and what worked for me, and I knew at the time that this was not it. I just, I was trying really hard to reach for something that made me feel pretty, and I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. So getting back to vintage with this one <laughs> and letting it all hang out. I, I wanted to show this not to show off everything even though that's kind of what's happening now, but I wanted to show this to kind of show where I'm coming from. So I felt like I had to put it all out there at this time. I felt like you know what, I'm going to do pinup, I'm going to go the pinup route and I'm just going to let it all hang out and that's exactly, this is vintage. This is what vintage is, it must be. So yeah, I was almost there, almost there. Actually, what inspired these photos are actually guest photo shoots. I forgot, I'm going to show the photo right here. It was from one of their campaigns they did. And again, I was so into reading Vogue's and Teen Vogue's and really into the fashion world. So I was trying really hard to try to copy what I was seeing in all of these ads that I was obsessed with. And of course, a lot of them were vintage inspired, but I just didn't know how to get there yet. So I was trying. Yep, there. <laughs> 
So I was trying to be like a greaser here, I guess. I have a leather jacket and a t-shirt and some higher jeans. I don't even think these were meant to be high-waisted jeans. So I still have my Louis Vuitton purse. And this one, I will admit, was real. And the only way I was able to get that was by finding it at a Goodwill. And here in Dallas, you can find all sorts of designer stuff at Goodwill. And I'm not even ashamed to admit that. I am much more proud of finding it for $5 versus paying however many thousands or hundreds of dollars that person paid originally, so good for me. <laughs> so yes, very grungy, very, I don't even know the word for it, I just, I guess it's like kind of, I, I don't want to say metal because that's like an insult to metal style of dressing just dark sure let's go with dark I was really inspired by Taylor Momsen and this is another singer that I don't know if I'm embarrassed to admit I listened to her because I think she's great I I liked a lot of her music during this time I don't remember what year this was but I, I wanted to really look like her too I was so inspired by everybody that I listened to that I wanted to just look like them so that's kind of what happened here moving on from that so here, I'm getting, I don't know what I'm getting, I just know that this is still my Teen Vogue phase. I was so obsessed with bright, bold colors. Oh, let's not forget Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars is what just turned my world around in high school. I, I wanted <laughs> to look like the main character, um, uh, what's her name? Her name... So, I wanted to look like Ashley Benson, who played the main character, one of the main characters in the show, and, uh, yeah, with my blonde hair, bright, bold colors, and accents of leather jackets and vests, and, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing here. Still, I went from vintage to this, and from something else to vintage and back, yep, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of that. And I don't even know what this is. I, I knew very well that this was not even my style at the time. I posted on my blog, on this exact post that I made about this outfit, I said, I usually don't wear sneakers, but these were quilted, so why not? Seriously, I just, I was grabbing and reaching for things. I'm like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. And, oh, I want to look like that. No, I want to look like this now. So here is a very, I guess I'm getting into trendy meets 70s at this time that started becoming kind of popular within Coachella type dressing. And I mean, I never even got to go to a Coachella because, because I'm poor. So I just wanted to look like the people that went to Coachella. I don't even know if this, if this is what they looked like or not, but that's what I was trying to go for here. And oh my goodness, let me just mention that I am wearing a copy of these Jeffrey Campbell platform boots that were super popular at the time. They had a wooden heel and they were black leather. And I wore these things with everything. I wore them, yeah, no matter what I was wearing, I was wearing these things all the time. And I got them on eBay. They were a copy as well. Sorry. So back to vintage. I was trying to do a 50s inspired look here and I'm going to admit this isn't terrible. I actually was almost there. It was not bad for me not knowing really what I'm doing. I just knew that I kind of wanted to look vintage and I went to another fashion show this night and I was starting to blossom and become who I wanted to be and I felt really good and my spray tan faded and really embracing my pale skin at this point <laughs> so yes and that is a nice little probably early 2000s dress that i thrifted trying to do 50s i i think there was a dress that miller miller Lillard, that marilyn monroe there was a let me start from the beginning there was a dress that marilyn monroe wore that i knew that this kind of looked like it had that sheer middle section like that and I think she had one so that's why I really wanted to wear this. So you can see I'm starting to do a little roll at the top. I'm actually trying. I tried to do a roll and it's not terrible. This one isn't really all that bad but I just the rest of my hair was 
kind of straight, kind of curled, and I had to have my fake Chanel purse and everything with all of these clothes that companies were sending me. And so the, the clothes that I was getting from companies at this point were actually kind of vintage inspired. And that's what I was starting to lean towards. I was trying to find more clothing within these companies that I could partner with that looked older because they were helping me with my style that I really liked now. And I was doing posts for them. So that's exactly where this is from. And then I just, I ruin it. I ruin it with this neon little romper and Louis Vuitton accents. I'm wearing this, a real Louis Vuitton bag. Yes, again, thrifted. Very proud of that bag. And those heels that I'm wearing are actually Steve Madden platforms that he autographed himself. He came to Dallas and I was just going to go and do like a meet and greet and take a picture. But I, I won in a drawing these shoes and he autographed them for me. And I'm really sad to admit that I, I didn't even bother to sell them. I just, I donated them because once these were not my style anymore, I just, I don't know why I would just do that. I feel really bad, but whoever got them, you're very lucky. Good for you. <laughs> so this actually isn't terrible. Um, even though this isn't really vintage, I was actually trying to look way more high fashion at this point, and I, I was really inspired by, 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 I was really inspired by vintage Versace, kind of 80s Versace, with these bright, bold, in-your-face kind of ornate prints, and I got matching boots to this blouse. I was so excited, so yeah, I was starting to really get into designer vintage and then just baby doll dress that comes up like right under my butt probably I mean I don't think that thing could get any shorter and if it did I would be in trouble so yeah very short and I guarantee you I was wearing my fake Jeffrey Campbell platform boots with this guarantee you yep and another I don't know. Oh, you know what? I got a spray tan in this one and the previous one. Yep. I got a spray tan and I was feeling really... I don't know. I was trying to wear things to accent my spray tan at this time. I think that's what was happening. Just lighter and bright colors. I was trying to really show off that nice spray tan that I got. Yeah. Very cool. And then back to vintage. And yes, this is really around the same time frame. I was just going back and forth between modern and vintage, and I could not make up my mind. And um, this is a dress I actually still own to this very day, and I've had nowhere to wear it. I've never worn it out before, but I absolutely love this. This is a dress by Jessica McClintock, and it's really not that bad. It's a gorgeous vintage-inspired ruched dress. It's ruched all the way down the front, and it has a nice little bustle around the butt. So it's very cute, very pretty, and um, I did not do a terrible job. I was trying to do the Veronica Lake thing. I think I knew that's what I wanted to do, but not quite. I tried. Here we go. Jeffrey Cable Platform fake boots with a 60s mini dress. This is one of the first vintage dresses that I went out and bought knowing that I'm vintage shopping. I was really getting into vintage once I discovered there's a store in Dallas called Dolly Python. Shout out to Gretchen from Dolly Python because she has such an amazing store. This store is what really got me into vintage and wanting to go vintage shopping at this point. So yeah, this was a almost 60s or 70s inspired look. That I knew at the time that's what I wanted, so I was feeling pretty cool about that. And then here is, I was trying to be 20s, okay? I know the dress, it's not, I don't, I don't think the neckline is 20s at all. If the neckline were a little different, it could have passed as 20s, but I was trying to style it like a day dress, and it has beading all over it, and I knew that I kind of wanted to look like a flapper, I guess, and 
my makeup's not bad. It's kind of 20s looking. I, I think I really tried to research my makeup at least. So yeah, I was excited about The Great Gatsby when it came out and I wanted to try to look like the, the actress from that movie. That's exactly what I was trying to do. And then I ruined it. <laughs> I completely ruined everything about that last photo. I was almost getting somewhere and I just took three steps back. That's what this is. So I got this dress from a company that I was blogging for and it was obviously 20s inspired, a little party dress, but looking at it now from my perspective, it's an absolutely terrible reproduction for 20s because not only does it come above or practically above my knee, it's just the silhouette is like hugging every curve of my body and that's not at all what 20s is. I know that now. Back then, I thought, ooh, look at this 20s dress that I got. I look like a flapper with my long hair. I, I didn't even bother to pin up my hair. And I'm wearing a pair of 1960s heels that belonged to my great-grandmother. And at the time, I truly believed they were 20s. I thought, surely this matches. And surely this tan leather bag will match these navy blue and white leather heels with this flapper dress. Really. Very good choice on my part. So here, I'm actually getting somewhere. I am proud of this, even to this day. I looked kind of like a 50s pinup on an authentic side, kind of, I would say. Um, I had a vintage hairbrush I was using and sitting in a vintage chair in the middle of a field because why not? That's so realistic, right? And um, I think this dress was actually a 50s or 60s dress. No, maybe 70s. I, I don't remember. I just know it was older. I was really proud of it being older and trying to do something authentically vintage at the time. And here we go. I. I started to discover Christian Dior, and with that, my whole world started to change once I discovered Christian Dior. Obviously, everyone knows Christian Dior nowadays with modern Christian Dior and things that other designers for the fashion house have continued to come out with to this day, but I discovered Christian Dior himself from the 1950s and original looks from that time and or even late 40s and that's what I was trying to do. I was trying really hard to look like that and I was so obsessed with his new look that it changed my life. Even going into college, that's all I made all of my projects about was Christian Dior's new look, everything new look. And that's what this was trying to look like with my fake designer bag. I still couldn't let go. And then I go back to grunge. And okay, I will admit, the only reason I think I was starting to go back to it at this point was because I finally got to go see Taylor Momsen in concert with her band The Pretty Reckless. And I got to meet her. And I was pretty excited about that. I'm not even going to lie. I went there with my dad. My dad took me to go see her downtown Dallas because I had no one else to go with at that time. I didn't really have a lot of friends that would have gone there with me. So uh, yeah, I was front row and then I got to meet her before the show. So my world was just complete at this time. And yeah, I wore a Led Zeppelin t-shirt. I, I still have that to this day. And I love Led Zeppelin. They're one of my favorite bands and not ashamed of that. Not ashamed at all. Here we go. I discovered Twiggy. I was trying to look like Twiggy and this was a 60s dress that I found at a thrift store that I, I knew immediately that that was a Twiggy dress and I was going to figure out her hair and makeup and I sure did. I actually really did and I didn't do a bad job for just figuring that out. So here, this look is really what also changed my life and I will explain why. So this day I got all dolled up in this coat that was also from a thrift store surprisingly 
Same with the hat, I believe, and I, I felt very authentic in this. I don't even know what time period I was trying to go for. I just knew that I really liked 40s fashion, finally. I was starting to listen to a lot of 40s music and being inspired by wartime movies and music, and this was what I was trying to do, I think, and I went out with my mom who is behind every single picture you're seeing right here because um, she was photographing all these photos for my blog at the time. So we went out this very day to our local square in the town that we lived and a very beautiful historic square in a town called Waxahachie. And I was taking pictures with my mom when I see a soldier walk by from World War II and I thought I was really seeing things at this time. I thought, surely I'm imagining this right now because I'm in my vintage clothes in a vintage square and now there's a, a soldier walking by, okay. <laughs> so I'm not even kidding you, I chased him down. I asked him, why are you all dressed up like that? Can I take a picture with you? And he's like, oh, I'm here for the reenactment. I'm like, a reenactment, where? Where's a reenactment? He's like, oh, there was a reenactment here earlier in town. And we lived in that town at the time, and I swear we heard nothing. We knew nothing about this. There were airplanes flying over, apparently, a whole battle with guns and explosions. And we were just a few blocks away. We had no clue. So I met another woman who walked by, and she was a part of the reenactment as well. And she's like, you, you better hurry. You better go down to the train station if you want to get some pictures with some other soldiers. you got to go right now because they're going to leave soon. So my mom and I rushed into the car, drove to the train station, and we got out and stopped a bunch of guys that were dressed up in their uniforms. And I asked them, hey, do you guys want to take some pictures with me for my blog? I'm doing a photo shoot. So we all went to the train station and took pictures together. There was six guys, six or seven guys maybe. And guess who happened to be in that group of guys? Yes, my now husband. He was doing reenacting and he was all dressed up in his uniform and there I was dressed up in my vintage and I had absolutely no clue that any of this was going to happen. So that's my little romantic story for you. And then here I am. I am in the Orpheum. Not in. This is outside of the Orpheum in Memphis. I was staying with family at the time and this was one of my first real older true vintage pieces. This was a, a 1950s Neiman Marcus black lace dress and had the original petticoat with it and I'm wearing my great grandmother's 1960s heels with it. I felt very vintage, very authentic even though my hair is just... I probably loosely curled it. I thought it looked good enough. I wouldn't have done that now, of course, but at the time, I was I was just killing it with that. <laughs> so, this is another piece that belonged to my great-grandmother. This was a 1960s jacket and dress that she made herself, feathers and all, and I am obsessed with this piece. I still have it to this day, and uh, yeah, I was styling it kind of vintage. I have a brown leather satchel that I was blogging for a company with and very modern nude heels that I was wearing and this was taken at the Peabody in Memphis and uh, yeah I tried. Here I am finally getting into the 40s kind of and this is taken in a cemetery. I, I like cemeteries. I think they're beautiful and I love taking pictures in them too. Not ashamed. Then, yeah, I started just getting into 50s. I was discovering a lot of companies that made 50s inspired dresses, and this was one of them. I believe the company is called Heart of Hope, like Hope Couture. So, yes, this was actually a really good reproduction. They make gorgeous reproduction dresses. And I really, really love this one. And I put it with um, a 1950s hat and a 60s fur. And yeah, not bad. Still trying with the hair and makeup's not terrible, but the hair, it's just, it's just there. I tried. 
this. This look right here. This was a big game changer for me, I think. This was another reproduction 50s dress with a 70s fur, I think. And I felt very good about this. And this dress is actually what I wore on my first date with my husband. He drove all the way to Memphis where I was staying with my family at the time. He drove nine hours to come see me to go on our first date together and I got all dolled up in this dress and did my hair kind of similar. Yes, very memorable dress. So once my then boyfriend, now husband, once we started going out together, he wanted to do the menswear vintage side of things and we both started visiting this woman named Barbara Kaufman who was the owner of a vintage store called Bonton Vintage in Waxahachie. And um, my husband and I grew very close to her. She became like family to us. And he bought so many vintage pieces from her along with myself. And she became a mentor not only for me, but also for him when it came to vintage fashion. I discovered so many vintage designers and different ways of how to style things authentically because of her. If it were not for her, I don't think I would have gone so far as I am today with vintage fashion. She really just grew my obsession, really, because she was so obsessed and so passionate about it. Her and her husband were in a band together back in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, and she sang and I believe he played an instrument. I don't remember what instrument, but she would dress in vintage. She wore a lot of 20s through 50s pieces on stage and she, she was adorable. I've seen all her old photos and if it weren't for her, yeah, I would not be who I am today, I don't think. So she changed my life also at this time. So here I'm getting into 60s more. This is actually a little cape thing that I designed and my mom made for me. And I'm wearing my great-grandmother's gloves here with a vintage hat, still modern heels. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm just going like three steps backwards, I think, at this point. I tried to do a victory roll type style to my hair, and they just kind of look like little bear ears. And just like little, little ears on the top of my head. And... My advice to anyone who's trying to figure out vintage fashion is just make sure your rolls don't look like ears. If they look like ears, you're doing it wrong. Just look at my photo and just remember, do not do your rolls like this. You don't want to look like a bear. Unless you want to look like a bear and that's what you're going for, then sure, you go right ahead. <laughs> so I'm getting into more 40s style here. I was blogging about this dress with a 40s inspired uh, swing dress company. And this was a dress that they made for me. I believe this was custom made for me and my measurements. And it, it was a beautiful dress. I absolutely love this dress. And it got me into more wartime fashion at the time. And I, I still, I was trying to do some rolls in my hair. It was kind of a ratted mess because my hair had so much bleach in it that it was really difficult to get these styles to work with me with all the fried mess going on on my head. So yeah, I'm trying. I'm almost there. And then I go back to the new look from 1947. I was trying really hard to look like Christian Dior's um, new look, the iconic photo that we all refer to as the new look. That's what I was trying to look like. And there was snow on the ground, so I thought it would be really cool to do it with snow around me. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I actually got kind of a bumper bang down, almost. I was getting closer and closer to really getting it down, hair-wise. This is a dress that belonged to my mother from the 80s that she sewed down to fit me and I wore this to a fashion show where I was auctioning off um, some menswear at the time. I was with my school, Wade College, and 
I was volunteering with a bunch of people from my school to help out with the event and it was called DIFA and DIFA is a huge event that we have in Dallas where they raise money for um, oh it's for a cause it's for a really good cause <laughs> I'll post the link to that on this I feel really bad now that I don't know what the cause is for it's been a long time <laughs> So here is a 60s inspired look. I'm actually wearing a 60s coat and hat and I have the luggage to go with it. I felt so cool with this luggage with my outfit and um, the clothing underneath I tried. It was kind of 60s inspired. I, I mean it's not terrible. I shouldn't be too critical. It's not bad. Here we go. I discovered the headscarf. I thought I was so glamorous with my sunglasses and my headscarf and I felt like a movie star and I was really starting to find myself through that. That's exactly what was happening here. And this dress was from a modern fashion company that I was blogging for. But I was trying really hard to do a Grace Kelly type look with this. That's what I was going for. And um yeah. Here is Sam with myself again. I was dragging him to all sorts of fashion shows and events at this time and I think we both really enjoyed getting dressed up to go to these things even though we weren't a hundred percent into the type of fashion that was being shown at these shows. We felt pretty good getting dressed up to go to them. more dresses from companies that I'm posting for and I just style them vintage. That's what I started doing. I just realized, you know what, I don't want to look as modern anymore. I'm going to work with more companies that offer vintage looking things and I was trying to do a 50s pinup vintage look. Maybe. 50s dress. This was a 50s day dress that I found at a thrift store. Very proud of it. Actually, it's probably 60s now that I'm thinking about it. I tried to make it 50s, even if it was a 60s dress. And those were some 1960s heels. No, not 19. No, no, those are not 60s. Those are some, yeah, I'm just not going to talk about that. So here we have a dress from the company Collective or Collective, however you pronounce it, from the UK. And they make really pretty vintage inspired pieces and some of them look really authentic. This one I think is a more pin-up-y dress. It's very tight fitting, but I loved the mint green with the polka dots. I was so excited to do a photo shoot with this. And I have on vintage accessories with it, but I'm still wearing designer pieces. I have a pair of YSL shoes that I'm wearing with this. They're, they're not horrible with it, but I still, I still really loved designer pieces and incorporating them at the time. Here we go. I'm wearing this to another fashion event, and this dress belonged to my mother. She passed this down to me, and I think if someone were to ask me, what got me started into vintage fashion, I would say it was this dress. I've seen this dress from the time I could possibly remember seeing anything when I was really little, and I would play dress up in this. And this is actually a 50s dress that my mom got secondhand in the 80s, and she wore it not even knowing that it was vintage either. She just knew that she liked the style too. So I guess you can say I get a little bit of that from her. Here we go. I am getting more vintage by every photo at this point and I really loved the 50s flattering waist with the skirt that flares out. That's what I was really going for at the time. And this was from an event at my school, Wade College. And getting more vintage, more kind of authentic. This is a more 40s inspired look. I was wearing authentic 40s heels. I was so excited. That was the first pair of true vintage heels that I found and those were also from Barbara from Bonton. She was my way of really getting all of those pieces that I probably otherwise wouldn't have found at just a thrift store or anywhere else. And I didn't think to buy vintage clothing online. That was not a thing that I was thinking about yet. So yes, very pin up, very 
very housewife, homemaker. That's what I was doing in this. And this was from another company that I was trying to get vintage inspired pieces from and do blog posts about. This was my first vintage bathing suit that I ever found and had to do pictures in it immediately. It was by Cole of California and they're very famous for Esther Williams uh, wearing all of their bathing suits in old movies. No, go lay back down. No, not up here. Can you be still if you come up? Come on. Okay. So Lady is going to help from the other side of me now. <laughs> so moving on. This dress is another 50s inspired dress I was trying to do more posts with from these companies and trying to find the most vintage thing I could possibly find on their websites and this was another one of those. And this is another 50s inspired look. Moving on. This is a true vintage dress. I think I found this at a thrift store finally. And it was a yellow silk like late 50s dress and I think it had a very um, high-end designer label in it. I, I have since sold it, unfortunately, but yeah, that was a gorgeous dress. But every, <laughs> everything that I did to go with it just kind of is a little crazy if I'm talking in the sense of authenticity. The shoes were a, um, I don't know, just, I don't know the word for them. The shoes... Anyways, the shoes were kind of modern, and then I'm wearing vintage accessories, except they just kind of don't go with it at all, in my opinion. So I'm trying to get into more 40s looks here. This was the first 1940s piece I ever found, this suit that I'm wearing in this photo. And, um, yeah, I almost was good with it. The blouse was good with the suit. The jewelry was fine. The little brooch I had and the hat was good. I'm wearing some, um, what are the words for these? Uh, they're clogs, yes. I'm wearing some clogs with this from Loda of Stock, Stock, Stockholm. And um, yeah, I, I don't think it went with the era very well. But I was trying, my hair was almost there too. Here I'm getting into more of a 40s look. I'm wearing a 40s suit that I finally bought online. I was getting into online vintage shopping finally. And I'm wearing 1960s heels with it. I, in my opinion, I killed the whole look just by wearing the shoes alone. It just it did not go. They were so clunky and low for the look. It just did not work. But yeah, there's my handsome husband doing his reenacting. And that was from the reenactment that I finally got to attend a year after we met. That's where that is. Here I am in a 50s dress with a coat that is 50s inspired that I was blogging about. I'm not bad actually. I'm I'm almost there. The hair's not there yet, but the style's almost there. And that dress is from Vessel Vintage. Shout out to Derek. Thank you for this dress. I love this dress. It's one of my favorites to this very day. So, here is a Marilyn inspired look, kind of, but also a Dior inspired look, kind of. There was a outfit that I was trying to copy with this. I wish I had this coat still. I don't know where this is, but I love it, and I love the leopard accents. I would totally wear this right now. I'm finally wearing true vintage pieces. I'm finally getting there. I started collecting enough. And this suit is a beautiful three-piece rayon suit. I've since sold it because it didn't fit me that well. Even though I made it look like it did in the photo, it just, yeah, it really didn't fit me that well. So, um, yeah, this is a great 50s inspired look that I finally put together. Even my hair is not that bad. It's tucked away. There's no stragglers. Stragglers? Whatever the word is. Yeah. Here is a Lily Ann suit that I found. And Lillian in the vintage community, 
is one of the most sought after suits you can find. They're so beautifully made and you can tell usually by looking at them that they're a Lillian just from the silhouette and the certain cuts and patterns that they had and the colors just yeah very high-end beautiful suits and that's what this was even though it didn't fit me that well at the time <laughs> so here's a 60 suit from Bergdorf Goodman that I styled actually pretty authentically I had a crocodile purse to match my heels and 60s hat I, I was figuring things out I was finally getting there so here we have a, another Dior inspired look and um, this time I'm wearing a hat that was actually designed by me and my mom made it for me at the time and I was too scared to make them at this moment but this was a huge part of what I was trying to do in school coming out with some vintage inspired pieces that were actually my own designs and this was one of them and it was a huge part of my portfolio and my logo that I came up with at the time with the big hat and the lips you'll still see that on my old blog I designed that logo even though it's so simple and cheesy <laughs> so yeah this was inspired by an actual Dior photo and I'll have that photo with it as well so um yeah, I was starting to really figure things out, and I was so obsessed with Christian Dior still. And finally, going back to more 40s. So this set was actually made for me by a company called uh, La Vie and Swing at the time, but they are now called Green of Grey, and they custom made this set for me. And they're based out of Spain, I believe, either France or Spain, and... They did a beautiful job with this set. It is a blouse, skirt, and a play suit, like a romper. And just really well made and adorable, even with the little puff sleeves. And that's what really got me into this style at the time. They did such a good job on that. So yes, more, more time here from Halloween. I don't remember what year, but Sam and I went out for a trip around a square. I think we got pizza and milkshakes after at a little soda fountain. That was fun. We had a good time. I'm finally going 30s. This was the first time I had experimented with a 30s look and I I think it's not bad even though I think I'm wearing slingbacks in that photo now that I look at it and that's not authentic to the 30s if I'm not mistaken. Someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong but I don't think that looks right with it. <laughs> so yeah I was trying to do a little um, maybe Carol Lombard or I don't know maybe Marlena Dietrich at the time. I was really getting into 30s films at this time. I began to get very obsessed with 30s fashion because of the films that I was watching. I... Yeah, I don't have very many words for my hair in this photo. <laughs> I feel like I could slide my hand through that roll on my head. It was massive and in my opinion now, I don't think it looks that good. There are other people that do wear their hair like this and they probably feel very good about it, but in my opinion, just my opinion that I'm putting out there, it doesn't look authentic. That's the word I'm going to use. It just doesn't look authentic to whatever I was going for at the time. I think I was going kind of 50s right here and I don't know. I just, yeah. That's not how you do a, a roll. It just that's a very rockabilly pinup version of a 1950s hairdo and it's just not right. Not authentic. So here I am doing my presentation for my final portfolio to graduate with from Weed College, the fashion school that I was going to. And that is the logo on the front of that that I made to go with this whole portfolio and all of my ideas of everything for my future business plan. It was all in there and I was very proud of it because I finally discovered that I wanted my life to be centered around vintage fashion and that's all what was in that portfolio. And I really, I started focusing on selling vintage after this and that was in my business plan that I had in school. So that's what I started doing full time. Here, yep, I wore a 50s dress for my graduation that was just bronzy and gold and 
very glam and I was wearing a pair of Christian Louboutin heels in this photo and I'm gonna be very honest with you they look really cute and they they photograph nicely but those are the most uncomfortable shoes I've ever worn in my entire life I could barely walk in them I'm lucky I made it across the stage to get my uh, certificate because after that I just wanted to take them off they they're very beautiful glamorous shoes don't get me wrong but if you're thinking about spending all that money to get a pair of them, just don't save your money. They're so painful. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, getting into more 30s, 40s fashion here. And so is Sam. Sam is actually really gravitating towards 30s fashion, finally, which is his love and passion even to this day. He's wearing a three-piece suit here, and he looks freaking awesome. Honestly, he... This is one of my favorite looks that I've ever seen on him. And I wore that evening gown and a matching jacket with mink on it. So cool. So I wore that out to uh, my graduation dinner. We went out to the French Room, which is one of the coolest historic restaurants in Dallas. I would highly recommend going there if you ever visit Dallas. It's kind of pricey, which is why we went for my graduation dinner. But um, yeah, a gorgeous restaurant, and that is why we dressed up. So I'm showing this photo for a reason. I kind of wanted to make fun of myself for a second. <laughs> so do you ever start doing something and you think it looks really good until you have someone point it out? Well, yeah, that's that's what happened here. So I was starting to get really into 1930s fashion and hair and makeup, even though my hair does not reflect it here. I started looking at how their eyebrows were done and I kind of took it to the next level. So um, at the time I was posting a lot of photos of myself on Instagram and one of them kind of blew up with some hashtags that I put under it I think. So other people outside of the vintage community started seeing my stuff and a person told me what they thought my eyebrows looked like and I will post a picture of what they told me that they thought they looked like. Yes, that is what they told me, that my eyebrows looked like. So I usually don't get so upset when someone insults me because I have been called every name in the book. I have been told that everything I do is stupid or weird. And that one though, that kind of woke me up a little bit to my eyebrows. <laughs> Even though it was so mean, I realized, oh my goodness. Yeah, they really do look like that. So. I finally listened to all the bullying I was getting about it, and I, I fixed it shortly after that. <laughs> so yes, doing more 30s fashion with Sam, going out to uh, vintage events. We uh, started seeing our friend Matt perform with his band, the Singapore Slingers, and he is such a great musician, and his band is so wonderful, and they do great music from the 30s and older music you probably would never hear otherwise if you don't already listen to that and he really brings it to life so we love going to watch him live and we would get dressed up to go watch him yes more 30s fashion here i didn't quite get my eyebrows normal yet almost there but i was wearing an authentic uh, 1930s dress that was silk chiffon and yeah i was really into that at this point and sam is wearing a uh vest and pants. I believe it had a matching suit jacket at the time. And yeah, he looked awesome. Finally, I fixed my eyebrows. Thank God. So I actually, at this point, there's a funny story behind this too. So you'll notice the change from bleach blonde to this color. And at the time, I was bleaching my hair so much. And then I was styling it and curling it that finally I was using so much heat on it that it broke off. My hair started to fall off because of everything I was putting it through. It had enough. It told me no more. So I uh, messaged my hairdresser. Her name's Leslie. She works at Ulta and she's so fantastic and so patient. She's been with me through everything that I've ever done with my hair at this point. <laughs> and I messaged her. I told her I'm going to shave my head. That's it. I'm going to come in, shave my head, and just be done with it. She's like, no, nope, we're going to try one more thing, and we're going to see if it works. So she cut off my hair, 
the best she could without cutting too much of the fried clumpy pieces off and she brought me back to my natural color and I was kind of in denial that my natural color was that dark she uh, put a glaze on my hair and brought me back to my natural color and I am so thankful to her to this very day for doing everything that she did to bring it back because I would never go back to bleach blonde at this point I I'm happy with my natural color now I'm thankful I did it and I'm embracing it here's another photo from that so I'm at this point I'm getting very much into 30s fashion and um, doing photos for my store posting things for sale yes more things for sale that I was photographing myself in dressing it authentically dressing it styling it authentically so finally at this point this is when I was getting really sick and tired of having no friends and I knew I wanted to dress vintage with some friends and finally go out and start doing it with some girlfriends because I can only put my husband through so much <laughs> and um, I was searching desperately for someone or something that I could do that with and I stayed up so late one night because I started obsessing over it there has to be something in Dallas for vintage related dressing up or getting together and I finally found an, a meetup group for people who like to dress vintage in a city outside of Dallas. So I, I messaged the person who made it and told her that I wanted to meet up with her. So I met up with her and another woman that was in the group from the very beginning at the time. And we all got together. That's Hillary in the black outfit and that's Jamie in the pink outfit. So that day we all agreed that Dallas was missing a really established vintage community. There was nothing that brought us together to where we could dress up and go to these events and go as a group and do stuff stuff together as a group. So uh, we all agreed that we would form the Women's Vintage Society of Dallas and that is what we formed that very day. And we, we've all come a very long way since this meetup <laughs> with our own individual style. Unfortunately, Hillary doesn't live around here anymore but I still consider her one of our founders of our group, so I would hate to leave her out. So yes. Um, this was just a few months after Jamie and I met, and we went to the Waxahachie reenactment. And uh, yeah, we were starting to evolve, starting to dress how we really wanted to dress. I got into making my own hats finally. This was the first hat that I made, and I started making posts about them. So shortly after this, Sam proposed to me, we got engaged, and here was our engagement shoot right before he deployed to Africa for almost a year. So while Sam was away, in order to keep myself from being depressed, I started really making hats a lot. And I went to uh, Wings Over Dallas in this, and this is an outfit that my mom and I went in together and made. She made the three-piece outfit that I'm wearing here all these coordinating pieces. I have a uh, vest, skirt, and a swing jacket that she made to go over everything. And uh, she did a fantastic job. This is one of my favorite outfits that I own, and I made the hat to go with it. And I became so inspired by late 30s and early 40s coordinating fashion at this time where everything was very matchy-matchy and very put together. Everything had a purpose and matched something within the outfit. And that's exactly what, what I was trying to do here. Yes, Jamie and I growing together in our style. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another outfit that I designed and my mom helped me make. She made the blouse and skirt and I made the little tilt hat to go with it. And I'm finally starting to discover how to set my hair better. And that is something you will see through these photos. I am figuring out waves and setting patterns and what works for me at this point. And I made a matching purse to go with this hat for Valentine's Day with my 40 suit that you saw in a much, much older photo that I'm finally figuring out how to style authentically at this point. 
here's me with the Women's Vintage Society of Dallas, or as I call all my close friends in this photo. We have Jamie, Heather, Aline, Sherry, Allie, and Janice in this photo. We all went out to go see Casablanca one night. We have a lot of fun dressing up and going out to do fun things. Here is Sam and I at our post-deployment engagement shoot that we did for our Save the Date photos. And uh, yes, he really found his style within this time as well. Here we are at a hanger dance and I'm in a little color block number there. Yep, I, at this point I'm good. This is this past year. I'm finally figuring myself out what I like, what works for me, what works for my hair, makeup, you name it. I, I feel very confident at this point that I finally have found myself, my style, and what works for me, and my height, and my figure, you name it. I have gone through so much at this point to try to really get to where I want to be with my style. And that's what you're going to see here. So this was from Wings Over Dallas. I'm wearing another 40s outfit. And this is a hat that I made to actually go with it. And I really love to make hats to coordinate with my outfits. So finally, finally I got married. And that is what you are seeing here in my bridal photos. I'm wearing a 1940s wedding dress and all vintage accessories. This was very special to me. This is exactly how I've always wanted to look for my wedding day, and it finally came true. So you're seeing that here, and here we are from the wedding. I, I couldn't imagine a more perfect wedding for what we both love and bringing it to life. Okay, come back up. Come up. Lady's back now. So... Here I am from a Christmas party this past year, and I am wearing a Adrian-inspired evening gown. If you don't know who Adrian is, he's one of my favorite designers from the golden era of Hollywood from the 30s and on, uh, mostly 30s and 40s, and he had the most incredible evening wear, and there's a dress that a vintage seller sold recently in the past few years, and it had these fiery colored phoenixes or painted birds on them and I actually found a reproduction from that exact time of that dress and I got that on our honeymoon to Colorado so yes I was so excited to finally own a piece that at least looked like it so here is that so as I said I got my real estate license this last year and I finally have been doing stuff in the real estate world, working on my first few transactions, and feeling really good about it now. And I actually changed my Instagram name from Gwendolyn's Golden Eras to The Vintage Realtor, if you don't already know that. And I am tying in my vintage style into real estate with everything I do, of course. I, I can't escape my love for vintage fashion, so of course I'm tying that into real estate. How could I not? So that is what is going on with me up to this very day. So, yeah. So, to end this video, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to watch my style evolution. I know it wasn't too embarrassing or too cringy, I guess. Well, anyways. I hope you all stay safe and healthy during this time. I know we're living in very scary times. So, wherever you are, and if you're quarantining yourself in your own home, I hope I can at least distract you from what's going on for a brief moment with this little distraction of a video. So thank you for watching and bye.